Hi Lucy. Hi Vanessa. Thank you for coming today. Just by way of introduction, my name is Vanessa Martin and I'm the Professional Development Manager at Dundee and Angus College and Lucy's going to introduce herself to you. Okay and I'm Lucy Ferrier and I'm the full-time childcare lecturer at Dundee and Angus College and my background is early years. And how long have you been teaching Lucy? Um, I've been teaching in early years for 25 years but this is my first teaching post with adult learners. Okay, so substantial experience in the field but not so much experience. Not so much with adults okay. or young adults. Okay, and we're going to talk today about um, the work that you've been doing as part of your, your PDA and particularly uh, the unit on planning and preparing the learner experience. Yeah. You've been working hard on that and you've completed your first evaluative report. So the purpose of today is just to have a professional discussion to explore your thinking um, and your reflection on the work that you were doing in preparing to, to teach one of the adult groups that you are working with. Does that sound yep, okay? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So if we can start off with just talking about the group of learners that you're okay. working with. Um, as part of your lesson plan, you've, you've described them, but could you tell me a little bit more about some of the things you had to consider when you were preparing to work with them? I had to think about the different personalities in the class, um, different learning styles, additional support needs, the fact that some, we had some mature learners in the class and some young girls just out of school. So there was a real mixed bag of abilities. Okay. In terms of supported learning needs, did you, have you had to make, do anything special for this group? Yes, uh, one of the students has a visual impairment. So I had to make sure that any written material was um, done in a larger font um, bold and with a, a 1.5 line space and mm -hmm. I've got it embedded now. <laughs> um, so I have to ensure that everything is done different, separate for her mm -hmm. and making sure that I don't forget. Okay Lucy, how have you reflected on the course content and it, ha its fit with the group of learners that you have in front of you? I had to plan this quite carefully. Um, taken into consideration it's a sensitive subject as well because child protection can be very sensitive. Um, I had to look at the, the different learners within the group, think about how I can deliver this material in a way that's engaging and interesting for them to keep them motivated um, and interested really. Okay. And you've described a very diverse group of, of learners. You, the approaches that you're planning in terms of differentiation, wh what, what was your thinking there? What do you know about these learners? And I, I drew on some of the, the theory. Um, for example, Kolb, he believed in sort of active learning. And because that's something that's familiar with me, with younger children, then I was able to adapt that with the older students. So to get them involved in practical tasks, again, that just hopefully will keep them interested rather than just sitting in, the, in their seats. Okay. And, and will all the learners be doing the same things at all the same time or will they have an opportunity to experience different kinds of activities? They will have an opportunity to experience different kinds, but most of the learning will be in groups again drawn from sort of people like Vygotsky who felt that you know they, they, if you're working in a group the learners will learn from other people with more ability and in previous classes that's worked quite well okay. you know where they've if they're working in groups and they're learning from each other so that's the the plan with this okay. that they'll work in individual groups. And had you had the opportunity to speak to any of your other colleagues or any other members of staff about who were, who were t also teaching this group? I spoke to the previous, um, the lecturer who taught this subject with another group okay. prior to that, so okay. got some tips there. 
Okay, mm -hmm. that sounds great. Challenges that you might have experienced in creating an inclusive learning and teaching assessment plan for this group. What kind of challenges did you encounter, if any? Well, challenges, I think, if you're prepared, that's the, the biggest key. Mm -hmm. Because with the individual, with the additional needs, um, there is another student in the class um, with dyslexia. Mm -hmm. There's not an awful lot in terms that I can do with the teaching, with that, but it's just being aware that she has that and also offering her support for assessment. Okay. Um, but really just having an understanding of the diverse needs and being prepared to cater for them is, was key. Were there any act formative assessment activities that you specifically built in? To um, lesson plan? Planning to do quizzes, formative assessment in, in a quiz format okay. um, to assess the, their learning. Okay. That sounds great. What about use of technology? Um, how will you use technology with this group? Um, and how, how do you think they're going to respond to it? That's a question we can never tell until, we, <laughs> until we've done it. Um, certainly in the past, I think variety is probably key. Um, the feedback that I've had in previous classes is they like variety. So the whiteboard, the smart board, the laptops, going over to the, the library, you know, just keeping it fresh, giving them. Um, also quizzes and games, they seem to respond quite well. And that comes naturally to me from working with younger children. So that works. Okay. So they're having fun at the same time as you're getting your message. Yeah, which is exactly what you do with young children. You've produced four lesson plans, which are outlining details of the, the work that will be taking place over a period of time. To what extent were you able to deliver the lessons that you really wanted to deliver, um, or were you, inhibit, were you prevented or inhibited by lack of resources, lack of time? What, 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 what was going on there when you were preparing those lessons? Um, I would have liked to have brought somebody in from one of the charities like Bernardo's or, and I know that we can do that but time, the time factor okay. was um, one of the, the factors that, you know, in an ideal world that would have been great to maybe have had a couple of speakers in okay. to talk about what their role because for part of the unit they have to look at legislation and charities and how they support child protection issues mm -hmm. so to have somebody else coming in would have been ideal but mm -hmm. time so reflecting on that if you deliver this let this unit again will you do something different well I'll have a better idea of what the content involves so we can plan more effectively in the future and what about the links between the different lessons how obviously the the students go away from you and come back again um, and life has gone on in between from, that, from, the first, from when you see them from one period to another. How will you make them, the, these lessons hang together for them? What kind of things will you do? We usually do a refresher at the start of the class so that we recap on the previous learning. So it just kind of jogs everybody's memory. And they're not singled out. It's just, does anybody remember what we did? And people have the opportunity to share and okay. that kind of gets them back into the zone. Okay, and do you find that everybody participates comfortably in that? Um, no, but with a previous class, we devised a, a lollipop system where you get the class to um, write their names or design their own lollipop stick. Right. And you just keep them in a cup and you can just pull them out sort of at random, so they're always aware their name could come out. Uh -huh. And you can ask them, um, does anybody know, want to share what we covered last week? Or, and you just hold the name up and they'll... Um, it, works, it worked well with one particular class and not so well with another, so who knows how it'll work with this group. Okay. But it, it's something that you've had experience. But it's a strategy experience. that yes. we could use you to could. make sure everybody's included. Okay, that's great. Moving on to the evaluative report that you have written to support your planning activity. Um, the requirement is for 750 words for that report. How difficult or how easy was it to keep to that restriction? I find it, I had a lot more words than that, but I always do that. I have too many and then I have to cut it back. Um, 
I probably could have done with more words. Right. Because there's so much to talk about within each category, if you okay. like. So no, I, I thought it was quite difficult to keep it to a 750 okay. word minimum. Could you tell me a little bit about how you prepared for this professional dialogue? Um, really just looking over what I'd written for the evaluative report, um, having a look at the, you know, basically what, what I've written and how we're going to talk about it, taking notes to remind myself yeah. <laughs> key words, um, and really just reflecting on what I've planned to do. Okay. Obviously an important part of the planning too is the, how you propose to evaluate um, what happens in the classroom when you deliver this lesson. Um, one aspect of your evaluation will, will be the extent to which the learners are engaged in what you've planned for them. Would you like to tell me a little bit about how you plan to, to make sure they are engaged and how you'll check that out when you're actually delivering the lesson? Okay, so um, within the lesson plans there will be scope for the students to direct the learning. So if I put the lesson plan on the projector at the start of the lesson then the students can have an input on how they want that to go. You know, they, Quite often in previous lessons, they've said, well, can we do that bit first? Um, you know, if there's something practical, some of the students like to do it at the end, some prefer to do it in the middle. So it's just giving them that choice and kind of meeting them, you know, giving them a bit of choice, really, um, which links in with Curriculum for Excellence okay. nicely. Um, giving them a bit of breadth and, and depth and a bit of a say on, mm. on how the lesson goes. So the, the technical term we would use to describe that might be co-creation of their of learning. Their learning. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Obviously the proof of the pudding will be in the eating, but how confident are you that your learning objectives will be achieved in, by what you've planned in this lesson? Fairly confident because the group that I have chosen are quite vocal and I'm sure that they will, we, re we reassess at the end of every lesson, have we met the objectives? So I think they'll be quite clear in giving feedback if the objectives are not met, and then I'll have to look at ways on how we can meet them in the next lesson. Okay, so you, you would adapt what you were doing the next time if... if yeah. Absolutely. Okay, that's great, Lucy. Um, I've enjoyed talking to you about the, the, the planning of this this unit and I hope when you deliver it it goes very well. Me too. Thank you. Thank very you much. very much for your time. Thank you. Okay.